Howdy. Uh, it's such an honor to be able to contribute to this year's muster celebration. Uh, A&M is known for so many wonderful traditions, and, and we're just blessed to be a part of this and honored to be a part of muster. Um, I'm joined here with my family, my wife, Teresa, my son, Bubba, and my daughter, Dylan. And uh, we, we're so saddened that we can't be there with you guys. Um, many of you know this has been a long year for us. Um, in April of last year, I was playing golf at Green Tree and collapsed on the golf course uh, with a sudden cardiac uh, death and, and, and just by many, many prayers and wonderful care from Midland EMT and Midland Memorial Hospital, uh, I was able, able to, to make it through. Uh, but unfortunately, that brought an abrupt ending to our time in Midland. Um, you know, in the days that followed that, we were surrounded by Aggies and wonderful friends out there and just covered up with, with more blessings and help than we could ever imagine. So, um, you know, we're, we're in College Station now, which is nice. Teresa and I both grew up here and, and College Station and Texas A&M have been a huge part of our lives. Uh, I've attended muster for really as long as I can remember. I've had the opportunity to go in multiple cities around the United States and even out of the country a few times to to really see the magic and, and celebration of A&M and our muster traditions. Um, you know, I think muster stands for, for you know, the past, present, and future, where we've been, really what A&M is built on. Um, each time I attend muster, I'm just covered up with emotion. Um, you, you hear names on that roll that you do know, but I don't know uh, many of you can attest, there's never a name that, that feels like a stranger that you don't have a bond with. And I think that's much to do with our Aggie bond and just how special we truly are. Um, you know, it, it, it's sad this year that we can't be together. It's a it's a unusual time for us uh, with the COVID outbreak, not being able to get together and celebrate. But I also think there's blessings in these times. Um, you know, instead of focusing on the financial disruption we have and some of the distractions, I think this is a time for us to kind of focus on, on our relationship with our Lord and Savior and, and certainly with our families and have a time to kind of reset what's important in our lives. So um, it's also allowed me quite a bit of time to reflect and enjoy some of my muster memories and, and Aggie memories. Uh, there's a lifetime of them, but I think I think what comes to mind first is is a few years ago I had the opportunity to celebrate muster in Oklahoma City, and my my dad was speaking and I got to see him answer here do the roll call for really someone that was was close to our lives and and um, you know I, I saw an interview with Dabo Sweeney not long ago and he he talked about. Um, the time he was at Alabama, which is his alma mater, and having an assistant coaching job, which at that time he thought was his dream job. And he talked about that being an end, end and and really uh, the whole process to Tommy Bowden calling and he and his wife, he had, he had started a new career and Tommy Bowden offered him an opportunity to come back. And as they prayed on those those uh, decisions that they were about to make, you know, he saw God's hands in a lot of things. And I think that with Texas A&M in general, as I reflected over the last couple of days, I see those same things. Um, that, that gentleman that my dad answered here for was a gentleman named Homer Stark from Orange, Texas, who had a couple kids that, that went to junior high with my dad. And him going over to their house, Mr. Stark kind of took a liking to my dad, but he was a poor kid from across the tracks and had absolutely no reason to have interest in him. But over time, he brought him to A&M, brought him to his first bonfire, first A&M TU game. And who could imagine 60 years later, uh, we'd have 10 A&M graduates in our family and, and one or two football games to talk about. But at that time in our life, we had no college graduates in our family. So you know, it, it, that's the first of many very, very special Aggies we had uh, in our life. You know, I've been blessed to know uh, my namesake, Bum Bright, uh, Bum Harvey Bright from Dallas, Texas, uh, an Aggie, World War II veteran, uh, gave everything he could to, to Texas A&M University, stood for what the Aggie Honor Code stands for, just a true gentleman. Um, 
people like Bernard Richardson, uh, Gerald Huffines, Buddy Payne, John David Crow, Aggies uh, that just gave everything back that they could so future generations of Aggies could have the same opportunity as they did. Um, been blessed to know current Aggies, Mr. Leach and Mr. Wright, uh, Frosty Gillum, Mike Cohn, John Schiller, Dave Dunlap, Mark Ellis, guys that tied to our oil industry, uh, tied to Midland, but have given millions of dollars and countless hours uh, given back to our university to make sure that it's it's one of the finest institutions in America. So, uh, you know, thank you to those guys. But there's just so many wonderful people to thank. You know, I think we could start by by thanking General George Moore, you know, class of 1908, that on the island of Corregidor in, in you know, life-threatening circumstances did the roll call, you know, and, and proved really to the world what A&M traditions are all about. So just, uh, you know, just wonderful tradition. So happy and honored to be a part of it. Uh, thank you to Midland for, for just the wonderful love and support you've shown my family during our time there. Uh, we can't wait to get back and see you guys. And uh, to end, I want to thank the Lord, you know, just for his grace, for allowing me to be here. And and really to, to answer here to, to the one and only Clayton Williams, uh, the Williams family. Obviously, everybody in Midland knows they're very dear to us. And I and, uh, want to answer here for him and, and just uh, gig them Aggies and God bless. We'll see you soon.